There's a huge primary night underway in states across the U.S. The results due to start pouring in at any minute, so keep it right here. And they could be a big referendum on the president, as well as the left's new socialism. So who will come out on top? We will know very soon. Just a half hour ago, polls closed in the special election for Ohio's 12th congressional district, just outside Columbus. Upstart Democrat Danny O'Connor, oh, Danny boy, trying to beat Republican Troy Balderson in a district that has been solidly GOP since 1920. If O'Connor wins, this could be a bad sign for Republicans going into the midterms. In Kansas, the GOP primary for governor is being seen as a major test of Trump loyalty. The president backing challenger Chris Kobach against the incumbent Jeff Collier. Will the president's blessing give Kobach his groove back? And let's not forget about this ridiculous push for the democratic socialist agenda. Free stuff for everybody with no way to pay for it. All eyes are on our old pal Bernie Sanders and his young side piece Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to see how well their candidates do tonight. Because if they do well, you can expect Democrats will make a major shift leftward just ahead of the midterms. Fox Business Network's Edward Lawrence is in Washington with all of it. Edward. Uh, yeah, you know, Kennedy, and this is the last special election before the midterm elections that are coming up. Uh, and it should be or could be an indicator, according to experts, as to which way the country is looking. Uh, this, again, as you said, was a district that was mainly Republican for as far back as you can remember. Uh, Danny O'Connor, the Democrat, is trying to go against uh, Rob, Troy Robertson here. Now, the president on Saturday t went to that part or that district and campaigned with Robertson. Uh, Robert Balderson, I'm sorry, Troy Balderson, campaigned for Troy Balderson, and he believes, uh, Balderson, that the red wave will come through and he's going to be part of it. President Trump's economic agenda is my number one focus, and his economic agenda is working in this country. More people are working than have worked in uh, many, many years. Uh, people feel like they're going down the, up the right track. And Balderson there confident that he's going to do or have a good showing among voters. Now, the Democrat there, uh, Danny O'Connor, says that he is actually going to be part of a blue wave and voters are going to go with him. Listen. This fight is important. The message that we send will be heard not just in this district and in this state, but around our country. And we will know later on tonight which way voters are deciding in that very crucial election. There's some other primaries that you mentioned, Kennedy, that have been going on in Kansas, Michigan, Missouri, and also Washington State. Now, the president won all of those states except Washington State in the 2016 election. As you said, there is, could some of those primaries could take the Democratic Party a little bit farther to the left. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Kennedy? Eduardo, thank you very much for keeping our night. El Fuego. Thank you. No, very, absolutely. So how much will we learn about the direction of both parties tonight? Let's read the tea leaves with tonight's panel from Bustle.com, where she serves as senior director. And she's a Fox News contributor. Jessica Tarlov is here, along with a host of the, the award-winning radio show, The Tom Shalhoub Show, author of Mean Dads for a Better America. Tom Shalhoub is here, along with a Republican strategist and the greatest purveyor of footwear I know, Noelle Nickpour. <laughs> Uh, back in action in the house at the yep, yep. plexiglass oval. Welcome, yep. everyone. Uh, Jessica, obviously all eyes are on this race right. in Ohio. We talked about it yesterday on the outnumbered couch. Yep. Uh, Democrats are very optimistic because this is a very red district. It shouldn't district. even be competitive. It shouldn't be competitive. Right. Uh, and Democrats are comparing it to the Pennsylvania victory with Connor Lamb. Mm -hmm. However, the dynamic is a little bit different here. You have a much better Republican candidate than you did in Rick Saccone in the Pennsylvania special election a few months ago. So admittedly different. Troy Balderson, I find it so fascinating that you could be Kasich and Trump endorsed. It seems like that would be really be at odds. It mm -hmm. looks like so far with the early tallies that Danny O'Connor pulled off 26.5 percent of the early vote, but that was expected. Well, we've uh, got less than one percent of the vote in. Right. And, and so far, Danny O'Connor is walloping him, but we yeah. know <laughs> one percent does not percentage an election points win, could, yeah. but that would be nice. But the, the best comparison is to Connor Lamb in terms of how moderate these candidates mm -hmm. are. He is not running on Medicare for all. He is not saying we should abolish ICE. He was not endorsed um, by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I think he will be fine in Ohio without her. I think a lot of Democrats would be better served if they went local, talked about the economy, and, and had some of the same messaging that Danny O'Connor and Connor Lamb have had. But the party at large is not necessarily doing that at all. And, and this is a, a big night for Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez if they can, in fact, pull off 
some of these upsets. Yeah, because their supporters are the only ones who uh, are, are motivated. That's all that matters. And, you know, these guys, I mean, God bless them, Danny O'Connor, Troy Balderson, they don't excite me. They didn't excite me in that little footage we just saw of those guys. And uh, nothing matters. Trump's president. Trump's president. None so of these yes, guys matter. nothing matter. Matters. Well, and, and none of the, the thing is that it's like, I think we're living the opposite of the old, was it uh, Tip O'Neill, all politics is local? Mm -hmm. All politics is not local anymore. It's Trump. The people who hate Trump, if they're motivated to come out, your guy will win. If the people who like Trump are motivated, then your guy will win. Uh, unfortunately for a lot of the Democratic Socialists, they're passionate but not motivated to vote. Yeah. For, for one reason or another. Let's talk about some of these other races. In Kansas, the president has backed kind of the dark horse, the Secretary of State, Chris Kobach. Tell me about that race. Well, I think in, in that race, he's picked his favorite. And I think, uh, you know... And it, this is an immigration hardliner that a lot of people would like to see part of the White House and the yeah. administration. And, you know, he's really putting, he, putting his neck out there on that because you're going to see uh, what his brand really can hold. You mm -hmm. really are going to be able to test the Trump brand here. Has the president been better at picking winners the last few primary cycles? Uh, yeah, I think he's getting a little better at it. I mean, you've, you've got to admit, I, th I think, you know, a lot of people have a problem with Trump's personality, but they don't have a problem with his policy because mm -hmm. a lot of his policies, especially if you look at the financial sector, you know, the markets, you know, in, in, in the red, mm -hmm. you've got, um, you know, uh, corporations hiring people. You've got a lot of great things on the economic side, even though you've got a how lot does of that, How does that translate and benefit each party? Is it just the party in power when there's a strong economy, they have a better shot? of holding their numbers? Well, I mean, it's like this. What exactly, if you have a strong economy, then what exactly is the Democrats' message? And it really puts the Democrats in a bad position to craft a message to be anti what? The party leaders have done a bad job of that. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi hasn't done a great job of that, but someone like Danny O'Connor, uh, you know, when asked about the president's troubles and perhaps some of his moral failings, he completely dismissed that and said it's all about bread and butter right. issues. Why can't more Democrats figure that out? Well, Danny O'Connor is running in a Trump district, which not all Democrats are, obviously. I think that we need to be a lot sharper on the economic messaging. We've been talking about this for months, that it is okay to say, I'm glad you have $1,000 back in your pocket. This is how I'm going to improve upon that. 1,000 crumbs. 1,000 uh, crumbs. Exactly. Delicious crumbs. <laughs> uh, and then to also talk about, I mean, Danny O'Connor has to be, to a certain extent, pro-tariff where he is. So that obviously doesn't have to happen all over the country. Sherrod Brown I just want to add, Yeah, well, that race. I love oh, Sherrod Brown. I want to add to what Noel was saying, though, about Chris Kobach, because he was one of the leaders of that voter fraud myth, and the White House uh, committee on it just came out and said that they had not sp uh, found any widespread voter fraud there. So I feel like Trump really doubled down on him because they had this simpatico over the fallacy that there was some widespread voter they don't fraud. in committees. Plus, Committee. in that race. Oh, okay. <laughs> in that race. The committees in general. No. What are they doing? No. What are all pushing committee? pencils trying to look busy? Just yeah. a, a bunch of group thinkers? Yeah. The worst. I mean, that's, that's government at its worst. It's, it's like uh, having the post office run your meetings. Yeah. Who wants it? I don't want it. Uh, we are, what I do want is all of you because you guys so are we shall stay. thoughtful, luscious, and amazing. And you shall stay. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to see the panel a little bit later, but I want to talk President Trump, who says his administration is responsible for the harshest economic punishments Iran has ever seen. This morning, he tweeted, quote, the Iran sanctions have officially been cast. These are the most biting sanctions ever imposed. And in November, they ratchet up to yet another level. Anyone doing business with Iran will not be doing business with the United States. I am asking for world peace, nothing less. Wow. Before the sanctions even went into place, Iran's leader says he was ready to make a deal. But National Security Advisor John Bolton called that propaganda. Hmm. Bolton then told Fox and Friends the sanctions are already working. We think the sanctions uh, that went into effect at midnight actually began to have an effect uh, back in May when the president pulled out of the uh, wretched Iran nuclear deal because many businesses around the world didn't want to risk losing business in the United States in order to continue to do business with Iran. So the implications are already pretty profound. A German car company has already suspended its business with Iran. So are the president's hardball tactics working? Joining me, a rock combat veteran and KFI AM 640 host. And uh, a man who was awarded the Purple Heart 
for being wounded in combat in at least two theaters. It is Brian Suits. Welcome back to the show, and thank you for your service. World peace. World peace. Do you believe that? Do you buy the world peace line? Well, everybody wants world peace, right? I, I, Trump has maybe uh, sponsored too many beauty contests, I guess. But, but the the effect, the secondary effect uh, after the sanctions is to get the population of Iran into the streets. And they've been there for a month. You know, ever since they've discovered how much of that, uh, you know, the, the Iran nuclear deal money has been diverted to the, the mullahs. Um, and it's and they can't hide this anymore, not with the interwebs. People have been in the streets now for a month and a half about water, electricity, food, diesel, gas, it's cooking really, oil, everything. You They're, know what, what you're, you're saying? It's really no different than Venezuela. So what keeps them there and what will actually work to make things change for a better Iran? A revolution, a real revolution. And you know what? How does that happen, um, though? Because the people with the guns are still on the side of the mullahs. That's the thing. It doesn't happen until segments of the security structure break away. And unlike the Shah's military, the mullah's military concentrate all the power and guns into the Revolutionary Guard Corps who, who are awarded a whole bunch of the pie. The, the regular army and regular navy, regular air force, they really don't have the weapons and the influence and power, if they defect to the people, mm. it's not going to make a, 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 a difference. So this is the difference between the Islamic Revolution and the Shah. The, the revolution learned the lesson of, of why the Shah fell. So sadly, I'd love to sit here and tell you, grab a gun, uh, grab 10 more guns, grab 100 guns. But that's not Iran in 2018. The good news is this is in 2009 and the average Iranian uh, protester, they know how to hide their IP address and how to hide their cell phone address and how to hide behind a VPN. So, so get, can you it, can you wage revolution digitally? Unless it fires a gun, you cannot, sadly. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because as we talk about this, and you and I have spoken about this many times, the reason we have a Second Amendment in this country is to make sure everybody has the ability to protect themselves. Because as you point out here, Whoever has the guns has the power. Am That's I how it worked for us. And, um, you know, I'd love to love I'd love to believe in the power of hashtags. But uh, no government secret policeman has ever been hung by from a lamppost by a hashtag. It, it, the Iranian revolution came about as a because of guns. And they they know this. Americans have forgotten this. But that's the the truth about Iran is that political change is yeah. not going to come from above. It's going to come just like it did in 1979. Yeah. It's going to come from the streets. My my worry is, though, that there are people within the administration who go, we've got guns. Why don't we go over there with our guns? Yeah. yeah the whole, that's luckily, not the best case in, scenario. That's not world a, peace. Uh, yeah, there's enough people in uniform who recall that when I was sent to Iraq in 2004, there were not enough of us. I, I was a guy in favor of Operation More Dudes. Um, and like my dad occupied Japan mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of dudes. Um, but um, no, we didn't do that in Iraq. And because of that, we lost a lot of dudes, yeah. uh, our dudes. But yeah, it, the, the idea of occupying Iran uh, four years from now, two years from now, that's a nightmare. We're not ready for it. Uh, well, I don't think we'll ever be ready for it. I think that is the worst case scenario. That is the, the one nice thing about uh, a sophisticated population that is more in tune with politics than ever. Uh, they realize people make fun of the president. But when peace is the goal and economic freedom is the goal, you tend to make better decisions. Will he do what's right in regards to Iran and this deal? Um, just let the sanctions have their effect. Mm -hmm. Just give it a year, give it two years. Just do what Obama wasn't willing to do. Turn the screws. And just like 2009, let the pressure build up on the inside. It may not be pretty to us, mm -hmm. but the end result is that it's going to be a, a better country. Sounds like your honeymoon. Brian Suits, thank you so much. And again, thank you for sacrificing your limbs and your brain for us. It's the easiest award to get. You just stand there. Never gotten one. Oh, well. Suits, you're awesome. Thank you. Coming up, President Trump is ready to talk to Russia. Just don't ask him about obstruction of justice. We're talking collusion, conspiracy, and Comey with Congressman Dana Rohrbacher. He's next. I've got a live election alert for you right now. Just a quick look at the race in Ohio special election. Democrat Danny O'Connor 
against Troy Balderson. Look at those numbers. The race isn't getting any closer. Uh, only 1% of precincts reporting right now. Danny O'Connor, the Democrat, has uh, quite a commanding lead, about 26 points over Troy Balderson. When we are watching the results, we will keep you updated as the night goes on. Is it a referendum? We'll soon find out. Well, the face-to-face -face showdown between President Trump and Robert Mueller could be upon us, but there might be a catch. The president's legal team is expected to respond as soon as tomorrow as to whether the president will answer face-to-face -face questions related to obstruction of justice. This comes just two days after the president tweeted that the meeting at Trump Tower between his son Don Jr. and a Kremlin-connected lawyer was nothing more than opposition research. It's a tweet that Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano said could cause some real legal trouble for the president. Watch. So if there was an agreement to receive dirt on Hillary from the Russians, even if the dirt never came, if those who agreed, at least one of them, took some step in furtherance of the agreement, then there is the potential crime uh, for conspiracy. Oh, lower. The president's legal team is said to be divided over whether he should discuss obstruction claims. But is Mueller only taking that route because there likely was no collusion? or conspiracy. Here with me now, California Republican Congressman Dana Rohrbacher. Welcome back to the show, sir. Yeah. Good to be with you. Thumbs up. Uh, so let's discuss this a little bit. What are your feelings about uh, potential conspiracy that Judge Andrew Napolitano, who knows the president, who has counseled the president, uh, laid out this morning on Fox and Friends? Well, this is uh, so funny because the public has to understand this is a big nothing this is this demonstrates the bogus charge of collusion yes. and the fact is they're talking about a meeting and I've, I've said this any politician in washington dc although i've been misquoted about this by the way any politician if somebody comes to them and says hey i've got some factual information that about your opponent that'll help you in the election no, uh, politicians, no matter who they are, will say, tell me what it is and I'll try to see if it's real or not. That's what happened with Trump. And it wasn't a secret meeting. It was in Trump Towers where you have to sign in. And once his son went mm -hmm. and listened and heard right away that it wasn't what uh, it was presented as, he left. He left just like that. And making a big deal out of this shows you what a bogus issue this whole Russian issue is. All right. The judge said that uh, federal statutes that prohibit receiving something of value from a foreign national, foreign entity, or foreign government. Uh, did Natalia Veselnitskaya meet the threshold for any of those? By, uh, by suggesting that she had information about something and she didn't have the information thus it didn't thus it didn't exist i'll tell you what did exist is when the russians gave 150 million dollars to hillary clinton's foundation mm. or five hundred thousand dollars in bill's pocket and the, we don't seem to be investigating that that's ignored by the press and this little well, and that's, nothing uh, and that's, issue that's is, aside from the steel dossier that was paid for and this was operation uh, this is opposition research rather that was procured yes. by a former spy from Russian nationals. And that was With essentially money from paid the Hillary campaign. Of millions of uh, dollars. I mean, but you have payments. So I understand she's not president. She's not going to be president regardless of uh, the vases full of tears that her supporters <laughs> cry as they leave flowers by her political graveside. Yeah. I get it. She's yeah. not going to be president. Yeah. But should this president sit? with Robert Mueller and discuss obstruction of justice, among other things. No, what this president should do is if Mueller has specific questions in mind, he should answer and uh, he should answer in writing the questions that the prosecutor has. Let me just suggest this. We've already seen from the prosecutor they're bending over backwards not to see anything that's been done wrong by liberal Democrats mm -hmm. and the leftists. They're doing everything to make little mole, you know, huge mountains out of little molehills mm -hmm. when it comes to the president. We know that if the president even uh, forgets somebody's name, they're going to claim it's obstruction of justice. Well, also, so I, I the think it could be problematic if, if special counsel writing. wants to ask follow up questions of the president. I think that's what they will try and do is uh, lay a verbal trap for him. So if he answers something, right. and, and I think that's what his lawyers are trying to do, that if he is, in fact, asked questions that there aren't follow-ups, I don't know how you do that. Well, and I'm wondering if Hillary well, Clinton well, had the well, same remember, sort of uh, deal these, with these, the FBI these, when she right. sat down. 
well, these guys are obviously not out to d- present the truth to the American people yeah. and, to, and, to pu- and to prosecute people who are guilty of crimes against, uh, against our system. Mm-hmm. We, we have had, by this whole bogus issue, has exposed to the American people what the president's talking about, deep state. They're talking about these things, these factors that are at play, yeah. where we have a swamp in Washington, D.C., with people who are not loyal to our system. we gotta, we got to pay some bills. Co- we got to pay some bills and drain the swamp, Congressman. Thanks for stopping That's by. It. I hope you come back. God bless you. Thank you. A lot of people think you're a spy. I think you're just fine. Uh, coming up, just about every social media platform under the sun has given controversial conspiracy theorist Alex Jones the boot. You might not miss this guy, but who gets to decide what is and what isn't hate speech? My monologue is next. Stay for it. Hate speech is really the worst. It should be abolished and put in a vacuum-packed rocket ship on a one-way ticket to outer space so we never have to hear or see it again. No one should have hurt feelings, and no one should ever be disrespected, because disrespect is bad and hurtful, and it is the basis for hate. But what is hate speech, and who defines it? For conservative rabble-rousers like Alex Jones, it's the bully nexus of modern social media who feel obligated morally to soften the edges of mean words. The great lathe of digital groupthink has oppressed the popular button pusher who has the habit of saying god-awful things just to get attention as YouTube, Apple, Facebook and Spotify are doing their best to scrub the ether of Jones' unholy sins. Now it seems like we're in a left-right scout-gathering match where both sides are going tit-for-tat to ruin people's lives. I have no doubt Roseanne, Sarah Jong, James Gunn, and James Woods, to name a few, have all said really stupid, hurtful, idiotic, messed-up word turds that collectively add up to a ferocious and putrid dung pile of impulsive nonsense. But should they all be banned and banished from social media? No! Do you really want elitist, new money leftists determining your taste? Does attribute-free, saccharine-steeped content sound at all inviting? Oh, hell no. In fact, that stirs up new levels of rage. Or dare I say, hate. As Twitter suspends the accounts of Daniel McAdam, Scott Horton, and Peter Van Buren, they are not safeguarding the world from toxic, predatory evildoers. They're attempting to control thought conversation, and ultimately society by whitewashing sharp minds who dare penetrate the well-crafted bubbles of people who've mistakenly bought into the notion that it's somehow better to be intellectually safe than challenged, and that the world can only tolerate one safe lane of expression. Words are not deeds, but oppression and social engineering by force are the dirtiest deeds of all. And that's the memo. Connecticut Democratic Senator and late-night snugglebug Chris Murphy seems to think the tech giant's takedown of Alex Jones doesn't go far enough. In fact, he tweeted yesterday, InfoWars is the tip of the giant iceberg of hate and lies that uses sites like Facebook and YouTube to tear our nation apart. These companies must do more than take down one website. The survival of our democracy depends on it. Really, Chris? Mm. Almost all of us can agree that Alec Jones can be very vile, but could this send us down a censorship rabbit hole when you have a sitting senator saying something like that? Joining me now, it's the host of The Next Revolution on the Fox News Channel, Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. Steve Hilton is here. Welcome, Steve. How are you doing? I, by the way, love that monologue. Remember, may, may, remind me to use the phrase word turd at every opportunity going forward. <laughs> I did love that. I will send you a message Sunday night uh, to make sure that you do. Um, so, Steve, there are a lot of people out there that we disagree with. There's a lot of stuff on social media that is uh, annoying that anyone could consider hateful and disrespectful. Uh, but are these sites going too far banning conservatives and libertarians they disagree with? 
Look, I think that, uh, that, that you could be critical of the fact that they've done it, but what's the alternative? We've, we've heard the word censorship used a lot in the context of this, and I always think when you hear that word, you think of the government. Now, these social media sites, the Silicon Valley elites, as you, as you rightly described them, they're not the government, not yet anyway, uh, although many of them would like to be. And so, in the end, it, it is their right to do this, and the alternative would be government control of yes. this. But that's, that's what you, Chris Murphy although, is, is pushing. That's what you can infer from Chris Murphy's tweet. And, and you're absolutely right. There's a big difference between uh, not accepting free speech and censorship, which is from the government. And, you know, of course, Facebook and Apple and YouTube and Twitter, they have the right to do all of this stuff. They are private companies. Uh, but the problem is when people feel like they're not going far enough, uh, do those on the left really want the Trump administration being the arbiter of online taste? I know that's what's uh, and, and so what, what you end up thinking and where you get to through all this is that the real problem is the total concentration of power in the hands of those very few companies so that their decisions really have this big social impact on what on what is said and thought. And what you really need is more competition, more social media networks so that, OK, if one of them bans, you can go on another one. And that's the real issue here is, is the fact that you've got these increasing sort of monopolies of thought and expression. Yes. And I, see, I think that that's what we really need to think about how can we practically create alternatives many many alternatives so it's not just one giant company whose decisions have these huge ramifications Helen Keller once said security is mainly a superstition it does not exist in nature and uh, I, I think she's absolutely right and the idea that that people want the safety and these good feelings uh, it's it's nonsense where do we go from here yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, the right to be offended is so important, mm -hmm. and it's so selective, the, 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 the way that it's now it would been totally politicized. These pompous Democrats jumping up and down like this are just so sickening, because, of course, if, if it was in the other direction, then they would be defending it. So I just think it's, you can't take them seriously. But this is a problem that's just going to get worse and worse and worse if we allow these, um, these, these, these uh, platforms to, to monopolize more and more of our conversations. Yeah, don't get lazy, people. People listen to Steve Hilton and watch his show Sunday night on the Fox News Channel. Steve, thank you so much. Good to see you. You too. Identity politics is a toxic ideology that's dividing and destroying the nation for many people. But California Democratic Senator Kamala Harris, she's still very much embracing it and going after her critics. And the truth is, we shouldn't just be thanking women of color for electing progressive leaders. In 2018, we should be electing women of color as those leaders. I'm aware that some people would say that what I just said is playing, quote, identity politics. But I have a problem, guys, with that phrase, identity politics. That phrase is used to divide and it is used to distract. I have no idea why she thinks tribalism is so positive. It isn't. And it's also why the president was elected. So what are the issues that are most important to Americans across the country, especially blue collar voters in the Midwest who are working their asses off, who see essentially no help from D.C.? Joining me now, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and author and painter at a hot dog restaurant. It's Charlie LaDuff. Welcome back, my friend. Hi, thank you. American Coney Island, come check us out. That's right, baby. Cleanest place in town. In the Dirty Delicious. D, right there in Detroit. Um, so, That's Charlie, it. what do you make of identity politics? And more importantly, the people that you talk to and work with who are still very frustrated, what do they make of it? Well, don't forget, I'm going to go all over this country. So, Senator, what do you got? What do you got for us besides voting for somebody by their skin color, which, you know, you're entitled to do. And remember, identity politics, women are majority. Hillary Clinton did not get elected. It doesn't work. It never has worked. It's not going to work. It's something for all of us. So you want to know what it is? It's simple. It's bread. We want bread, whether it's pumpernickel or white or it's brown bread. It's all about bread, and if you can't deliver that, you're done. And remember something about, about the senator. She was talking about black women in that speech uh, working for Doug Jones, okay, in Alabama. Mm -hmm. It was missed that Doug Jones won and was probably popular 
with black people because he put the Klan in prison 35 years after they blew up the church and killed four girls in 1963. So it's not identity politics, it's do we identify with each other. So, you know, p pick your tribal issue. The country's too big, the parties are too big, and fractionalizing it doesn't does not work and is not going to no it's, and everybody knows it it's too easy to separate everything and if you're going to be the next president of the United States you have to have more than that you have to have better ideas you have to have a message that resonates and you have to build on the economic success that we're seeing now and you have to let people know you know your wages are stagnant because of this problem I'm going to solve it and therefore you know hopefully get the government out of the way and allow people to do better but you can't do that when you're too busy uh, shoving people into various ghettos and corners no and nobody's listening okay for real nobody's listening it's it's not a, a big movement it's a piece of a movement and maybe the Democratic Party yeah. uh, uh, starts to break apart like the Republican Party did. You know what I mean? The very rich and elite and the working class. You've seen what happens. Maybe, maybe there is a wing of progressives that break off and start their own party or, uh, uh, you know, the identity I'm fine politics. With that. I would, I would love to see that. I would much rather I think it would be see that and, and see an authentic representation in this country than the stupid two party system that relies on land gimmicks like this. Charlie Ledev, come back to New York soon. You keep saying that, but I never get a ticket out there. <laughs> what? Check your mailbox. That's so weird. <laughs> Charlie, thank you. Great to see you. Yeah, thank you. Let's take another quick look at the uh, special election in Ohio, a blue-collar state that could be a major bellwether for the midterms, at least according to whoever wins tonight. The race has tightened considerably. Uh, now we are at 10%. You see that Danny O'Connor has eh, about a 14% lead it was 26% just a little bit ago. He is fighting Troy Balderson, the Republican, who has the backing of both Governor John Kasich there as well as the President of the United States, who held a big rousing rally this week. And we will be watching the results. We'll keep you updated as the night goes on. It is rolling on, because coming up, West Hollywood, the moral center of the universe, has voted to remove President Trump's star from the Walk of Fame. Should we get out the jackhammer? When are they coming for Bill Cosby's star? We're talking Hollywood hypocrisy with the panel. That's next. Good evening. Attacking President Trump's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame has become this summer's ice bucket challenge, but the fun could be coming to an end because... The fuss budgets at the West Hollywood City Council have voted to remove the president's star and a measure they introduced because of what they call the president's, quote, disturbing treatment of women and other actions that do not meet the shared values of the city of West Hollywood, the region, state, and country. You know, like other outstanding people who currently have stars on the Walk of Fame, like Kevin Spacey, who's accused of preying on underage actors, or Bill Cosby, who's been convicted of crimes Far worse than winning, ele winning an election that broke Hollywood's heart. So has Hollywood and West Hollywood lost their collective mind? Or did they never even have one to begin with? The party panel is back. Jessica Tarlov, Tom Shalou, and Noel Nickpour. Uh, Tom, I will start with <laughs> you. Uh, it doesn't mean that his star is getting removed. This is really just West Hollywood making a suggestion to the L.A. City Council because the Hollywood Walk of Fame is not in West Hollywood. Well, but you don't think they're going to get their way? Somebody's going to remove it eventually because they're going to they be tired. They keep removing it. They yes. do. Ka -ka 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 -ka. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, they should leave it there and they should keep replacing it and then allow people to keep uh, destroying it. In fact, people want to destroy it. Mm -hmm. So auction off the destruction of it. And then these are shovel ready jobs. You, you destroy it. <laughs> you build it again. I mean, it's like a jobs program. It really is. Yeah. It's one of FDR's alphabet programs. Uh, in, in 2016, uh, the commission said, no, anyone who is, has a star on the Walk of Fame, that is permanent. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not something that is Indian given. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's a destruction of <laughs> God, <laughs> subject. Uh, it's, it's also, it's destruction of property. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bad to do. We all know that. I mean, 
And also, President Trump, I mean, to be honest, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be upset, but he wasn't convicted of a crime. I mean, we have Bill Cosby starting <laughs> well. Uh, Fingers yeah, crossed for Bob Mueller, <laughs> Jesse. Give us 20 minutes, Noel. Oh, uh, great. I do think it is interesting to bring up the Bill Cosby issue because what they were saying wasn't just this is a president that we hate. They were saying that it's because of his treatment of women. Yeah. So if you go through the Hollywood Walk of Fame, it's going to be a lot more people in the Bill Cosby category. Kevin Spacey, it was mm-hmm. younger men, um, but also his crew. Brett Ratner. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he has the star yet. Um I think it's an interesting question to ponder, but I don't, I don't think they're going to do anything with it. And they, they will, stripe on it or something. What? Should they remove Donald Trump? Yes. If they're not going to do a, a full, you know, look at everyone there. Absolutely not. I, I, I think that that is unfair. Once but you're people in, you're will. In. Well, once you're in, or have a full evaluation of everybody. If we're going to talk about, you know, right. civil but he war statues. Star, if we're going to talk about star changing acting. flags, and you're doing those kinds of oh, for we're acting about in all his reality things. show. Sure, he did. He did. No. no I, not, I understand that. President. He's the only nothing. living no. president. He's so great. He has golf courses named after him. Yep. I have heard that. Though <laughs> I have not been invited. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most presidents have to wait until they are posthumously honored yeah. with airports and whatnot. But he's he's already got him. He's that wait, good. Wait. Will they ever come after President Alex Jones' star in the future? I don't know. <laughs> 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 oh, it's not even a radio. It's just a picture of a giant blowhard. <laughs> it's really the, the memes that are going on right now about Alex yeah. Jones are pretty sensational. And did you see the woman who works for him who thought that she figured it out? About we're going to we're going to talk oh, about it. Sorry. During the break. No, oh, you great. guys are fantastic. Noel, Tom and Jessica. Thanks. What a glorious night that has just begun. Topical Thrones next. <laughs> Facebook is testing a dating app that allows you to choose from five different genders. This is a big deal because most dating apps will only let you get lied to by one gender at a time. Doctor those profile pics because this is the topical storm. Topic number one. We begin tonight in America's top hat, Canada, where the health insurance is free, but the car insurance is going up. Oh, gosh. Sorry about your right, eh? Oh, look at that. Oh, lordy. Amazingly, everyone involved was fine. Because those mullets are like helmets, including the driver of the other car who had just graduated from the Danica Patrick School of Driving. She gave a heck of a valedictorian speech. Re- rescuers say it's a miracle no one was hurt in the wild wreck. Or as the owner of the truck described it in his new for sale ad, a minor fender bender. Locals are calling this the wildest thing to happen in Canada since Tim Hortons brought back their breakfast burrito. Which, oddly enough, also destroyed a lot of morning commutes. <laughs> Topic number two. Canada isn't the only foreign country making headlines tonight. Let's head out to New Jersey where Keith Urban, the guy who sings, Blue ain't your color, found out the green isn't his color. Check this out. (laughs) Urban was at a New Jersey Wawa late last Friday night. Looks like morning. Lot lizard. He didn't have enough money. He wanted to buy some goods, so the woman behind him offered to pay because she thought he was homeless. (laughs) She told him he looked like Keith Urban, and he told her he was, but she didn't believe him. You can't really blame her because, let's face it, you don't normally wind up in a Wawa late on a Friday night if things are going swell in life. Urban's bodyguard had to confirm his identity. Bodyguard, that's cute. Cheer up, Keith. I get mistaken for homeless men all the time. As if that's the only reason someone would pass out on a park bench in broad daylight. Onward! Sometimes you need a nap. You're very comfy. Topic number three. A new survey finds that 7-Eleven coffee will give you the best bang for your buck. According to said survey, a 16-ounce 7-Eleven coffee provides 129 milligrams of caffeine per dollar. That's five more milligrams than Starbucks, and it's 48 cents cheaper, which can put you can put toward a taquito because you deserve the finer things in life. Dunkin' Donuts have the lowest amount of caffeine, so if America runs on Dunkin', it's going to get a lot of participation trophies because everyone's sleeping when Dunkin' Donuts had the worst caffeine ratio. Uh, it does the best cups. It does have the best cups to panhandle with, according to this expert. This woman is being praised for her generosity. But if you ask me, we should be praising Nicole Kidman. She married this homeless bastard. By the way, homeless men 
don't have such smooth skin and such lovely frosted tips. <laughs> Topic number four. Always got to look at the shoes, too. Uh, there's a group of researchers in Massachusetts who don't need coffee in the morning because they've got another vice that has a little bite to it. These guys were studying the ocean when they almost wound up sleeping with the fishes. Chicka chicka pow pow, wait for it, pokey pokey. Yeah, a great white shark jumps out and nearly bites the guy's feet off. He decided to let him live when he realized that the shark, that shark week was over. The shark's like, screw it, I'm not going to waste all my Weight Watchers points on this researcher. They're not going to put me on TV. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Weight Watchers, the company's stock was down 5% early this week after its membership numbers were lower than expected. It's a true story. Weight Watchers lost 5%. But if history is any indicator, they'll gain it back and then some by the fall. Because that's when the pumpkin spice lattes come out, basic bitches. Topic number five. <laughs> Finally, let's head down to Arkansas to beat a man who likes rap concerts so much. He'll take a plane just to get there. Meet 18-year-old Zamarcus Devon Scott. He allegedly tried to steal an American Eagle twin-engine jet and fly it to an out-of-state rap show. There's no word on who he was going to see, but a witness claims it was Lil Wayne. We can't confirm that, but he's definitely in a little trouble, and he's going to need to find a little bail money. Police say Scott has zero flying experience, but he figured, hey man, if Spirit Airlines could do it, can't be too hard. He was charged with commercial theft, but his lawyer wants the case dismissed because he only stole the plane after running into car trouble. Apparently there was a typo on the Waze app. Oh, my Gordon will be right back. Stay here. We've got this election alert. Let's take a quick look at Ohio results pouring in as Democrat Danny O'Connor is facing off against Republican Troy Balderson. Ooh, we've got 31% of uh, precincts reporting. And you can see here in Kansas, less than 1%, Jeff Collier. He is the current governor beating Chris Kobach by uh, about four points. Chris Kobach, of course... The president's choice. Go to foxbusiness.com for all your results. Thank you so much for watching the show tonight. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Kennedy Nation, Facebook Kennedy FBN, email KennedyFBN.com. See you tomorrow night. Goodbye.